This is going to be the first episode in a series of four, moderated by Carlo van der Leijer. And today it's about partnership and strategic organization. My name is Rudy van Beurden and I'm going to be the sidekick. Good to be here, good to see you all. Uh, maybe a bit about my background, I work at the Technical University already for quite some years. And uh, actually one of the things that I've been busy with the last five years, maybe one of the main things was working on this EIT uh, from urban mobility. It's uh, I kind of be, be one of the founding fathers who so we'll go way back and it's very good to be back in this ecosystem of um, strengthening our mobility. And one of the things that we do is of course try to inspire all new startups and um, yeah, we get quite some inspiration from all the startups that we also see uh, growing here around in, us, in our ecosystem. Uh, actually, one, also one of my responsibilities was that I was uh, responsible for all the student teams that happened here uh, together with some other people on the uh, Technical University and I was kind of the, the chief diaper change officer <laughs> uh, of, of all the student teams. So, yeah, w w one of the kids that I have seen growing is, is here, so good to see you here. We, we regularly see each other and I hope for the next 40 yeah. years again because it's, it's, it's fantastic what you're all doing. So. Together, I'm, I have the honor to talk to you about organization and the strategic alliances, what we did already uh, for a long time. And seeing you growing up from starting with these very strange ideas, what all these student teams came up with, I, th I think you had a uh, you had a berserk week last week. Maybe sure. it's good to, to start with the actuality on that one. What, what happened last week? Uh, yeah, it was crazy. So uh, Friday, we announced our uh, 40 million, actually 48 million uh, investment round. There you um, go. It was... Uh, Amazing, uh, <laughs> amazing news for us, of, of course. I was actually on holiday uh, on uh, on Friday, but I didn't oh. catch any <laughs> any of my free hours because uh, on uh, in the, in the morning we went live with the news, and uh, all day it was crazy and phone calls. And of course, you should be aware that if you announce an investment round, uh, there are also are going to be a lot of uh, people are trying to get some luck uh, out of you. So you need to be aware that you're not going to jump in all the requests you get. Um, but I think it's great news because it's it's really a first milestone for our company to, yeah. to get into production. And uh, started eight years ago on this campus uh, developing a, a solar car where a few people believed in, including yourself and uh, some others. Uh, seeing it now uh, uh, being grown into a, in a mature company, able to, to lend a significant investment round in the Netherlands, is, uh, it's, a huge, uh, it's a huge step forward. Yeah, it's, it's not the first milestone, as you said. It's uh, a lot of milestones happened yeah, already, of course. Ones, but uh, yeah, yeah that's, that's that's the thing. But uh, I, I tend to say always, and I might, you might have heard me saying this already before, that that these students, especially the student teams, have this unique talent to come up with the most crazy and often say stupid ideas. Uh, but I always keep on repeating as well that uh, in order to have a breakthrough, you need to start with a stupid idea. A lot of people think that's the other way around, that any stupid idea will be a breakthrough, which is not the case. <laughs> but actually, we expected you to prove our wrong because with our experience, we could easily say that putting solar cells on a car is not going to work. You can easily calculate that until you proved us wrong. And that's actually a part of thing of this, this, this incredible thing that you do is by partnerships. We're gonna talk to, about that in the second phase of the interview. But um, yeah, I was also asked to, to talk in this organization because it's another thing that, that because you probably uh, learned more from you than you learned from us, at, I guess, but, but especially on this, this organization. It's so different than with big corporates also because of the size probably, but it's also you do a lot of things differently. Now, maybe to start with the organization is to get, get the right people. You're now with 150 people, I guess? Yeah, we just landed at 150. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I ju just learned that, that it's a very special number. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we, we had a sh short talk on this one. It's the, we, we'll get back to that one. It's <laughs> the Dunbar number. You should study on this one as well, but we come back to that. But, but fast growing itself i think a lot of companies ha are a little bit jealous that you are able to hire people because you need people yeah. that are very wanted in the industry so what what's your secret how do you reach all the talent i think so when having a company with an ambitious idea as lighter so becoming uh, a, uh, a a car manufacturer and actually re revolutionize how you the way we travel ourselves uh, with such a big ambition you automatically attract people who um, do not buy in your company because they want to get rich or they want to earn mm -hmm. a decent salary or of course they do yeah, but um, the, the, the intrinsic motivation of people applying at Lightyear is it's insane it's people 
the first uh, quarter of a of a uh, uh, interview uh, mm -hmm. is more about <laughs> their ambition and why they want to join Lightyear and why they believe it's a good idea and uh, how they already thought about applying solar to electric cars and because uh, it really is like quarter to a half an hour only on this and then after that we we we, we introduce to each details. other <laughs> yeah, the yeah. details yeah. it's crazy how many people apply because of their intrinsic motivation and that's key in the complete company once that is not in place in our company uh, it will be a failure therefore it's insanely important to have this uh, intrinsic motivation uh, uh, in every employee in the company as soon as we recognize that someone is there for for his, for, for 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 other reasons it is not it is going to be a failure so that's step one you need to have a, a, a you hire people with intrinsic motivation and you can easily test that it's there are a lot of tests out there where you can test intrinsic motivation, like? but also, yeah, by actually um, um, uh, asking them uh, uh, three, four times, five times why, and if they oh can't yeah. answer that question, the five times why, yeah, if if, if they can't answer the question, uh, mostly the second time, third time why is is is, is bad shit bullshit, so therefore, <laughs> uh, you it's it's quite uh, it's it's quite a good starter, but of course. I think 80% of the people applying at Lightyear has this intrinsic motivation. And I think that's, that's the key, which we also learned in a student team, because in a student team, you devote your time two years uh, to a specific goal. Yeah. And you won't reach that goal if you're not intrinsically motivated to, to reach that goal, because you get so many setbacks. Uh, you need to overcome a lot of uh, minor details or some major details. Uh, and then if you are not intrinsically motivated, you won't be able to, to reach that goal. So for us, that's, that's number one. And that's also number one why uh, was also my advice to all the startups is um, uh, really only hire people which are completely confident that they but, are But that, that combines with this, this goal that you are able to offer because you do have True. a mean transformative purpose or this big, hairy, audacious goal that everybody talks about that, 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 that takes care of this intrinsic yeah. motivation. So you have to have the goal and yeah. then start searching if people have intrins intrinsic uh, motivation. Yeah. And ask the five times why. Definitely. That's always. a good one. So yeah. why are you here? Why? And keep on asking and the third, fourth time. Yeah. Then it's you're either bullshit or yeah. they're really unmotivated. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So um, we learned already <laughs> a bit there. <laughs> now, ab about this organization where you land in your, uh, in your company, these 150 people, you're also organized kind of top down. I hear Lex every now and then presenting the organization and where normal organizations start with the CEO and then have a management team and then the people, etc. Your triangle, your pyramid is a little bit the other way around. It starts with people and it ends with, uh, with Lex. With Lex actually. <laughs> can, you, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, I think uh, Lex is uh, incredibly accessible. So he's uh, a person which, uh, which highly values uh, uh, um, to be accessible for everyone. Uh, and he, is, he has a natural, uh, I wouldn't say disrespect, but I think a uh, natural um, uh, something against slight, like slight anarchy. Slight, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so he d yeah. he is he's the opposite of arrogance. Uh, yes, I would exactly. say, yeah, and, uh, yeah. he is incredibly, uh, um, yeah, friendly to everyone in the company. I think that's that re uh, culture reflects on the complete company because as soon as people get like the idea that someone is uh, being an, be, uh, be, being hierarchical, then he immediately gets a response from from multiple. Uh, 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 spots within the company, and that's because we are actually grown from the student team. Student teams are, by definition, I would say, <laughs> are, are 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 horizontal because you're all students. Yeah. You're all on the same level. Nobody has a career. Nobody has an immense fur fortune. Uh, no so status. Status. Yeah. yeah it's uh, and you get an immediate response from your from your peers if you act strange, <laughs> yeah. in a sense, if you act <laughs> arrogant. Uh, so you definitely learn to be sort of, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, it's, it's almost altruistic, I would say, uh, how we how we treat each other, and I think that's good, and we should should keep that culture. And and Lex, of course, from his background, contributes to that. But it's more than Lex only. It's really because uh, our company has these roots in this in the student teams, and therefore I would say uh, student teams are the way forward for every university uh, from now on. <laughs> Yeah, that's why we keep on investing. We have we have 51 by now already in right. different <laughs> categories, yeah. etc. So it's uh, almost it, it kind of exploded, <laughs> etc. 
I think I think the university of the future will be closer to the to what student teams do than what the standard curriculum is probably because uh, that's that's I think that's a very interesting discussion yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. but probably not for this not for, for this show. one that's that's another session probably yeah. how you should organize a an university instead yeah. of companies but uh, definitely I would I would jump into that let's get back to yeah. company because what you say is, is is recognizable and you can keep it flat as that when normal organization startups have this kind of culture but you also hear them complaining as soon as they got better that's what we pre-discussed shortly normally this happens at 150 people. It's called the Dunbar number. For there's a guy that uh, invented that, invented <laughs> that actually, or studied uh, primates and uh, what have you. But <laughs> at 150, not so much primates, it's humans. At 150, there's something that you do not know everybody by head, etc. And it's the, it starts growing, and you have to kind of processes yeah. organize it. Do you, do you already feel that this the growing pains are 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 might be coming now? And yeah, we had we had already had some growing pains. We we grew our company in 2019 actually quite fast. Then we had a quite a drawback um, where we where we we, we became smaller, mm -hmm. um, and now we actually are. are rapidly growing again and with indeed with, with growing uh, there are going to be more more processes and indeed you don't know all the people especially in this covid situation super strange because <laughs> you you tend to have people in a company working together with you ever nev never <laughs> physically met, uh, met so yeah uh, yeah my team consists of three people i n actually never met so that's strange uh, in in person um but indeed i think um, that is, is going to be an interesting, interesting discussion uh, the coming months in our company, how to organize uh, growth. Um, and I could foresee <coughs> maybe that we are going to start some sub-tribes or so, uh, specifically focused on, on specific <laughs> technologies. I, w I would know. Uh, that's some, yeah, I can that's tell you probably more about it within a year from now, but <coughs> yeah. Okay, we'll have, we'll have a next round then. But <laughs> that so I also recognize that yeah, people that get, come out of university prefer to work at you in some cases, especially the some entrepreneurial cases, yeah. people, etc. Uh, but you also managed to hire quite some uh, experienced, executive experienced ones from even Tesla people yeah. joining you. What's, what's their intrinsic motivation? It's the same with, with these startup people that, that still have nothing to lose, etc. No mortgage, no family, etc. No, it's it's much more of a uh, rational decision, I would say sometimes. Okay. Uh, and um, so, it, it sometimes it's like uh, someone working at Tesla who wants to be more with the children at home, but wants to have the same environment, uh, a huge ambition, and really wants to work at a company with this huge ambition. So, yeah, um, that's more of a rational decision. But on the other hand, most of the feedback we get from uh, from seniors is that uh, actually they are. They really want to sort of get uh, start their second career, or so, oh. <laughs> like they mentioned. Okay. So really to to learn uh, to work in a company which is uh, um, um, operating in a completely different way, and are really open to for this sort of uh, experience. So they it's not a midlife crisis thing. It's, I wouldn't it's really say a, a second career. Yeah, I would say uh, they are just after their midlife crisis. Yeah, it's, it's better to start <laughs> a new job than a new family, etc. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> that's also very yeah. good advice. Yeah. No, I think what you see there is that uh, Lighter is organized in, uh, in 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 really in, in this in this in this flat uh, hierarchy, yeah, and I think exactly. a lot of this. Seniors also want to experience how that works, and, and that's that's an essential thing. Yeah, it's yeah. Not, it's th they grew into this corporate, but actually nobody liked this culture. Exactly, and that's the thing. That's how, how are you going to yeah. stick to this thing, with all respect of corporate culture that in some industries are are, are very necessary or, or yeah. prerequisite, but but indeed, yeah. How do you stick to this startup mentality in long time? I uh, I have some I have some experience myself in, in fast growing companies, etc. But that's that's the key for the future. But uh, yeah. I'll be there to uh, to watch you on that one. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. And, and also, if you have uh, vacancies, do you do you have do you start with function descriptions or do you look at somebody and then adapt the function descriptions? How do you? We actually we are not, we are starting with making function descriptions. However, um, um, most of the time, someone applies for a role and and, and you, you immediately recognize this is intrinsic motivation, and you 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 really sense that this is someone who could add value to the company. Most of the times, uh, when the HR yeah. uh, 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 is not looking, then the functions <laughs> are getting rid of the table, and uh, and we immediately start talking about okay. what this person actually wants to add to the company. And I would say, I think, 40, maybe 50 percent of the the people hired at this at this moment actually, the first week 
they have a different role <laughs> that they oh, apply so, for. So, so, I don't know <laughs> so if we should institutionalize this one, but it is actually also what I, I forgot. I forgot the author, but it's, it's this book, The Good to Great. So somebody yeah. put it in the chat who the author is there. But the Good to Great, it, it exactly mentions that. Try people that fit that you that you that you feel that are going to contribute, and then adapt the function description to that. And of course, everything should be happening, etc. You should. You should make sure that everything that happens, and that, but don't distribute that in function yeah. descriptions. Try to allocate people to that. Yeah, it gives so. sometimes gives headache for the for the HR department because yeah, it, it yeah, gives but <laughs> that that's, that should be their goal as well. Right? <laughs> to have the people on the right place, and, yeah, and, true. and and probably they know that as well. Yeah. So, uh, okay, so that's good. So organization still growing. Uh, yeah. How many people you're gonna have probably in five years from now? You expect? Yeah, we need to land at least, uh, uh, I would say, 500. But uh, this number is only work people working at Lightyear. Yeah. Having said that, I think that if we, over in five years, we are going to produce our uh, high volume car, we have thousands of people working to create this solar car on the road, but not sp specifically working maybe at Lightyear, but working in uh, companies supplying us or maybe helping us to manufacture yeah. the vehicle. So there's a huge ecosystem <coughs> uh, actually which we are actually building at the moment. So at now, at this moment, there are 150 people working at Lightyear, but I, I would say there's a multiple of three to four um, of companies involved in the development of the vehicle, involved uh -huh. in the development of technology, also involved of, 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 of hiring, of raising funds. Of So there are a lot of uh, companies actually in the ecosystem. and. Yeah, maybe there's a nice analogy which we also discussed, but you see that some companies really choose to build it full integration. So, for example, Tesla, complete integration. They want to build the batteries themselves. They want to build the, 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 the complete vehicle themselves, uh, do the assembly, do the, the sales, the delivery. Uh, we are much more looking at a more, I think, European model where we want yep. to work together with companies in an ecosystem. That's also something we've learned, referring back to the student team. Um, We've we've had uh, more than 100 companies sponsoring our student team, uh, yeah. so we are learning. No, I, I, I learned that that a lot of these companies actually could huge could benefit from us, uh, same as we can benefit from them. Um, so if you organize this this organization in the way we, we we are doing at the moment, I think we can actually scale more uh, more rapidly than 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 Tesla did. Okay, so we we now ended actually in the second part of the interview, indeed the strategic alliances as you do so, but yeah. but. Actually, this externalities, by the way, in between uh, people, if you have questions, the last 50 minutes we're going to post your questions, so please have them coming up. Rudy is going to collect Definitely. them, I hope. And you had a question already. It's it's done by James C. Collins, good to great. That's what's the, the book. Oh, oh, oh yeah. sorry, you have yeah, a, the that's benefit actually an answer, James that's not a question. <laughs> oh, I had a question, this is the answer. James C. Collins, okay. Go and read them because that's the essential yeah. thing for the next <laughs> phase. Yeah. So please keep uh, keep on coming with the questions. We'll come to uh, come to them later on. Definitely. But actually, this is the essential thing on the strategic alliances. And and indeed, it was kind of the cliche or the new management with them that you have don't do everything yourself. Somebody else that can do it better, let them do it. So that's actually also how you managed to build a car with only 150 people, which on itself is berserk. No. Now, that was the opinion until Tesla came up, and actually Apple does kind of the same. They, they do everything themselves, everything. Even now make their own chips for their autonomous driving, etc., which is which used to be a, 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 a tier three supplier, you know, and now they do that all themselves. Um, there's there's probably not a one right winning model, but you clearly chose the other way. That's, that's yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's our strategic decision we've made in 2019 as well, to not produce or not assemble our own vehicle, so we want to outsource yeah. that. Uh, and we really want to focus on our core technologies, which are in a sense the, the solar panels integrated in the vehicle, yeah. which we also think is going to be applied massively uh, across all other uh, modalities uh, like buses, but also other vehicles. Uh, it will be a huge market. And second, uh, we build a platform, a vehicle platform, which is built for efficiency. And that's the, the key of Lightyear. So really focus on efficiency in every detail of their development. We are very good at that. But we also want to have our uh, supply chain uh, focusing on the efficiency because we are not going to develop it ourselves. So we need, really need to build this, I would say, automotive supply chain of efficiency <laughs> to be able to deliver the customer a vehicle which is incredibly yeah. energy efficient. Um, um, we clearly chose not to do it ourselves. Of course, huge respect for Tesla and other companies who are choosing the more vertical integration. 
but I think this company fits our culture, fits also the region we are in. Um, and for now, it actually is working quite well. But, but do you see something like a, a re-verticalization? Because we, we try to split it up, etc. with supply chains. I see how, how the entire automotive industry is, is built off. But it makes it harder to make the optimum system as efficiency, True. for instance. That's, that's the advantages. And you don't have to negotiate with all things. And, and the data, whose data is it from all these components? If it's all yours, that makes life a bit easier. True. Is this going to, because of all these things that I just mentioned and, and lots of other, do, do you foresee re-verticalization or do you want to stick to this one and think, be the better model? I think the digitization, which is actually happening right now <coughs> in, this, in the complete supply chain, is, is going to be, is helping us actually to get to help our suppliers build a better and efficient, more efficient product. Because yeah. we are building a company which is actually quite open, so our suppliers can actually interact directly with our systems. Um, and therefore, we have much more insight in what they actually can do. Um, and we are sort of also, uh, uh, we are not going to uh, be an automotive uh, OEM, which is um, saying to a supplier, we have this price point and you need to build this product at this requirements. We are going to say to our suppliers, we want a product which is the most efficient product you can ever build. You can build. For now, that's the that's the most so important requirement. You have a functional description, and that's it. That's and it. You let them solve it. Price even doesn't care at this stage. That's why the car is quite expensive. Oh, yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Carlo. I'm a customer. You actually yeah. are paying now for that. I, I, uh, I wouldn't I, say that, but I, I think prepaid it. Yeah. Yeah, but that's that's one of the reasons why we are able to have yeah, exactly incredibly dedicated suppliers because the suppliers also say. It, this is for us is completely new because normally we get a request from an OEM saying that yeah, we need to build this, this price point and that, this that requirement. Does it make you too dependent then on them? Or, no, do, you, or do you just, who, for instance, who, whose IP is it, for instance? Is it yours IP or is it the supplier? Sometimes it's our IP, but uh, we have now some agreements with, with uh, suppliers um, or even partners more, more, uh, to whom we can deliver. Yeah. Uh, to have an agreement in place that uh, we also have joint IP when we co-develop something. Yeah. So we have these agreements where um, where we uh, specifically uh, determine the field where we want to collaborate. And we say, okay, if you invent it, uh, then it's yours. It's, if we, uh, it's my idea, it's mine. But if we co-create it together, it's, it's both our IP. And we really keep track of this in a sort of a register. Uh, and we have monthly reviews with that with our, with our partners. Um, of course, it's based on trust. That's if you if you don't feel this trust between the two parties, it doesn't work. So you need really need to have this feeling of trust. Yeah. Um, you need to be again intrinsically aligned on the goal. So you want to both develop a product which is incredibly energy efficient yeah. to be actually able to drive on the on yeah. the sun directly. If you have this, it's actually it's the hiring a, uh, an employee should be the same as as, as yeah, hiring, hiring a supplier. A supplier, yeah. It's <coughs> it's, it's it's no different because in in a sense you are working towards the same goal. Uh, and why should I treat my supplier differently as I treat my employees? It doesn't mm -hmm. make sense because they're both equally important, I would yep. say. Yeah. If you see it like that, uh, the, but of course there are a lot of suppliers out there which we refuse to work with because they're more like uh, uh, squeezing us and they are... Uh, yeah, did you experience that already? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and they want to be really eager to, to to gain the IP which we already are in we are we are also interested in for example and yeah. we cannot find common ground to share it for but, example. But but do you then point out beforehand which IP and which components that are definitely yours and, and your yeah. you see some, as the focus yeah. areas? Yeah some so, so some you said this is the efficiency yeah. of the entire drive train, the solar cells implementation. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah and some parts yeah we don't really I would say we we care about but it's not really our core so that's something we could uh, we are okay with yeah. it if the IP is on, the, on their side. So we define fields. So we, we define which field do we want to have based on our core competences and they define based on their core competences which, which they're interested in. And of course, there's also some room for joint IP and based on this <coughs> uh, register then we, we use and based on the, yeah, the, the project management around this, we, uh, we are able to do this um, yeah, quite well. And it's actually, yeah, it's not a unique model. I know, for yeah. example, Street Scooter, uh, yep. Also use this. Uh, I used to, I, I used to watch their uh, edX uh, series on the, on the vehicle development, which is a recommendation for all the startups out there to also watch. It's it edX the. It's an edX course from Street Scooter. Okay, uh, the edX course of Street Scooter. Yeah. So that's another thing you learned. It's it's a great one. Yeah, it's okay. they really explain the complete uh, journey of how they built the Street Scooter and also how they tr like to treat their suppliers. And I think we we as a company want to. 
um, not not 100% copy that, but we want to uh, uh, use the same values uh, to work together with our suppliers um, yeah. and not treat them as um, uh, um, yeah, <laughs> sort of companies which you could squeeze <laughs> yeah, 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 and get the most out right. of. But we really want to help have them on board our mission, and our mission is to build the most in, in so energy efficient vehicle. That's, that's the modern co-creation that you're actually applying already. Yeah. I, I saw really waving already. Do, yeah, do we definitely. have some questions coming in or uh, yes. are we already at the last quarter? No, 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 not yet. We still have like half an hour left, yeah, so yeah, we're easy so. on the time. Um, by Samuel, actually a few questions. Um, it has to do with strategic alliances and organization. One is actually on the members of your team and the other one is with, uh, with other suppliers and you actually mentioned already you shouldn't treat them any different. But the first question was how did you recruit outside of your core University of Technology network? I think you had way too many people willing to work for we you. We have a it? tremendous inflow of, of good people. Uh, however, some vacancies are really hard. Uh, uh, electrical engineers, for example, are uh, quite hard to get. Yeah. Uh, still, uh, they are also acting really hard to get. So that's I really like that mentality. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, it's sometimes frustration, uh, frustrating. Um, but yeah, it's for us. It's it's of course, it's maybe more easy than a company which is building a really specific product within a system. It, it for us, we really yeah, we, we build a complete vehicle. We have this insane ambition of driving a light year of clean kilometers in 2035. So it's really sustainability is really easy sort of to communicate for us. I can imagine if you have a company building a chip which lets perform a solar panel two percent better. Uh, still, it's tremendous, but um, it's it's much harder to communicate on that. So, but then um, you should really um, maybe sometimes be more ambitious than it uh, um, than you would feel comfortable <laughs> with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, also, in, when you're developing such a uh, subsystem or a, 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 a tiny product, um, I think that really helps a lot of companies to be sort of overly. Uh, ambitious uh, in that. Um, of course, you should be realistic in your operations, but in your expressions, you can be. Yeah, you should be more ambitious. I think than than a lot of companies are actually uh, doing it at the moment. Yeah. yeah, and actually, there was quite a track record already. Obviously, winning the solar challenge that's and everything. I would, yeah, that incredibly helped. So that's also when something which uh, which Carlo and, and Tom Bax, uh, another advisor, also told us, and, and also others. Arts that Steinbuch, yeah. March Steinbuch was really important. Um, if you win the first time. The World Solar Challenge, it, it shows that you have a really capable team uh, and, and the technology is also okay. If you win a second time, it actually shows that not only the team is okay, but the technology really makes sense. And after the second time, after 2015, uh, we decided to start the company because that really was the moment when we, we really were uh, confident that the, the, the physics of our, of our product actually were right. Uh, so it's yeah. it's not about the team, it's not about the, the, the circumstances, it really is about it works. Uh, of course, there's a really long way of development, but if the core uh, of the of the physics are okay, um, then, then actually there is a way uh, forward. So um, that's the core of our company, right? So <laughs> yeah, true. Um, yeah. Actually, this, this big hairy of Dash's goal, the mean transformative purpose that you have is both on the HR and also to have your own goal is, is, is maybe the most, it's the starting point. Huh? Starting point, definitely. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Which, which you actually, we, we now see the picture here of the launch uh, in... Uh, yeah, there was uh, goosebumps all over the place. One and a half year ago, I guess, or almost two years ago, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, that was another milestone, actually, yeah? Yeah, so what we see here is actually the moment the car gets unveiled. Uh, and uh, it's, in the, it's in a place in the Netherlands where we have this huge hangar where actually there is a sort of a, uh, a curtain which could be... Uh, opened uh, and that's you see the curtain actually opened and the sun came in and it was at six o'clock I guess in the morning yeah I uh, know <laughs> <laughs> <You were there>. <laughs> <laughs> I, had I had to be there half past three already <laughs> yeah, because I had, I had a small role as well yeah <laughs> my gosh and, and it I, was, I yeah. thought why did but this is this is about thinking differently I said why why do you do this he said yeah but our potential customers they're relatively richer people and they have such filled agendas <laughs> so you can't get a spot in it <laughs> but everybody has has room in their agenda at six in the morning <laughs> So why, why why won't we do it at six in the morning? So but who who will come six in the morning? I said yeah, a lot of people because we have two shifts. <laughs> it was already sold out twice at Sadly. Yeah, there was a traffic jam indeed at five o'clock. It was a traffic traffic jam at five o'clock. Message, yeah. That's, uh, 
<laughs> but that's about thinking differently yeah. a little bit. And it was the longest day, so the earliest sun rays of the, uh, it was in June. Yeah. And it was exactly r rising. Uh, we, we were a little bit lucky, you were a little bit lucky with the weather as well. Like so it's only uh, looking. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. Sometimes, so that's yeah. that's just a little extra on thinking differently, uh, et cetera, but, uh, but, yeah. but very well done. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have another question on this one? Uh, yeah, a little bit different. I don't know if there's a whole new marketing proposition or business proposition. Samuel is also asking, what was the challenge of just supplying a solar roof, for example, to Tesla? Instead of building the whole car. Yeah, that's stuff. the other thing. So you can be, you, you can also become a, a partner, a supplier to other people in this model, is it? Yeah, definitely. So that's uh, we now have uh, three Teslas driving around with our technology. We have no specific partnership with Tesla in place at the moment. Uh, Tesla isn't uh, renowned for being the most easiest to work with, <laughs> uh, as they're and all. And they're going to virtually integrate you. Therefore, uh, therefore yeah. yeah. But it's more for us. If I, it's it's more a proof of concept yeah. to show that our technology actually works also on on a, on a vehicle which is not optimized for efficiency. Yeah. Um, well, actually, the customers now using our solar roof are quite happy because their battery drain is, is less. Um, so uh, we are learning a lot from that uh, project as well. Um, but my my role in the company really is also to look at how can we scale Lightyear not only with the vehicle but also with our technology. And I think um, in this concept of working together in this ecosystem, I think maybe there is more value in the uh, technology we develop um, than in being able to build a vehicle. You yeah. know, it's yeah. it's 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 uh, all those are very <coughs> good as assembly vehicles. We are not, uh, but we want to be very good in designing a system which is able to eventually drive completely on the sun uh, if, the, if, the, if, the, if the, the, the solar cells get better, if the car gets lighter, if the battery cells get more uh, energy dense and, and, and cost friendly. Yep. Um, all these um, industry trends are actually helping us a lot to, to reach that goal. And if effectively, it, it's about the system design. It's about technology that we develop. But then who actually is going to be the assembly of the car? It doesn't really matter. Of course, it should be a partner which is uh, incredibly de devoted to, to the same goal as, yeah, as that's, we have. That's, that's the starting point. That's the starting point. Yeah. But essentially, it's, it's not us, uh, definitely, <coughs> who um, want to be the, the sole uh, uh, OEM in the world. Yeah. <laughs> it's really about enabling uh, uh, actually everyone to join our train and be able to drive on the sun because we really believe that is the most <coughs> yeah, most friendly solution but you don't want to end up in a situation that we said oh thanks for the idea and uh, thanks for motivating us and uh, and, no, true. and, and we, we go steal your idea true. so you, no, so you did your thing in in yeah, trying to be ahead yeah. of it speed is one thing but ip as well ip is incredibly important yeah. what, and what's your position and what area what yeah. can you disclose on that so we uh last couple of two years uh me and my team we worked really hard to get a company on board uh, in our ecosystem uh, who is actually managing our IP portfolio and who is also actually managing ASML's IP portfolios. We learn a lot from how Which they is? did it. Yeah, EPNC, oh. uh, okay. Exeter, Polak and uh, Chalois. It's a very uh, renowned company. Um, they actually have now on their website, we are an exclusive Lightyear partner on their main website. So, so they're very, yeah. <laughs> that's, again, it's really about aligning on goals because they also are the, the, the yes. IP officer of ASML, which is a huge company and we are just a tiny company, okay. but we are on their homepage. So, so you keep them fresh amongst the corporates. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, that's exactly what they are saying. Yeah, that's, that's, like, that's, 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 that, that's what they mentioned. And they are helping us tremendously with managing our complete portfolio because managing IP is for us incredibly important. Yeah. Yeah. I heard that from another company as well that worked with you that they, they, they it's kind of a fitness exercise for them in order to make yeah. sure that it that isn't easy. That people are <laughs> it isn't easy. Uh -huh. No, it isn't easy, <laughs> but it's it's uh, th they learn a lot as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's for them also a stretch sometimes. <laughs> so coming back to this essential thing that we discussed, this strategic lines, your strategic decision to work with externalities and and try to cooperate instead of verticalization, which I by the way agree with because verticalization is is very difficult. You need agree, a berserk yeah. amount of money. Insane. A berserk amount of money and, and a berserk amount of luck as well because it's just simply money, a lot of talent and drive doesn't doesn't get you there. Look at what happened with Dyson. They had a lot of money and a lot no of talent as no. well and they didn't make it for some reason. So uh, that's that's a dangerous way. This is this is the the possible way for uh, yeah, for you. I think you mentioned it, it's not the, the way you're wrong. It's it's not that, that verticalization is wrong. 
totally not. No, no, that's that's yeah. true. That's apparently so because yeah. it's got impressive what Tesla's doing, of course, and uh, and we wouldn't be in the discussion with all the electrification if that weren't there. So that that's that's true. that's true. clearly so. But uh, but what what is if it doesn't work out? Did you already experience that you had this cooperation with a partner and then it was a little bit too optimistic and they needed to get out? Are, are you not? incredibly dependent then can this also not be endangering the entire yeah, of course uh, product yeah. of course you need to uh, in, in a lot of ways you need to dual source so you need to have backup you do that dual sources in uh, the yeah. essential parts okay essential parts we um, of course it's not everything is, is currently dual source but we are uh, building <coughs> building on that definitely um, if the relationship is really good between the two companies and there is a lot of trust and there is a lot of um, 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 development going on and there isn't there is potentially no reason to dual source at that at that stage but there are a lot of uh products on which we are currently setting up this strategy yeah because you need to of course some if the trust is really high and the relationship is good then still a company could fail <laughs> yeah that's uh, that's true it makes you yeah. it makes you very dependent so yeah. you have to identify which ones are you want to have dual exactly. source because yeah. co-creation in a dual source is a little bit different huh? you, yeah. you, it's it's mostly two competing companies and you True. Yeah, you, you so sell your yeah. soul to one and the other one doesn't want etc True, and therefore we have no really long so we don't sort of uh we always evaluate our partnership every 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 year so every partnership agreement which we have in place is being evaluated constantly and in every month we sit together every uh, year we evaluate if we want to continue or not so we have all these potential exits uh, in place if we want to if we want to move move forward um, but I think indeed so there are core technologies on which we have co-creation partners which we do not dual source um, um, because we are really confident that 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 these companies are stable and that the relationship is good there are a lot of company yeah a lot of parts in the car as, as a car exists more than 10,000 com <laughs> components uh, so you should really uh, dual source some of these components um, where it's not a huge added value to the efficiency. Um, okay. No, and you're right. lucky you don't have a gasoline uh, uh, car because Definitely. you have a little bit more component. Do you have really 10,000 components? No, it's less. It's, it's, I, it's think, um, I, th I think a gasoline car might have 10,000 components, yeah. but yours? I think it's 90% less for us. So I think we Ten would arrive at 1,000 or so. 1,000 components, yeah. okay. Of, of which not all are essential. And then so we have also the, indeed, that's, it's the bolt and that's right, also included. Yeah. The bolts as well, yeah, yeah. from the Netschroef. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay, from the also a Helmont company <laughs> Netschroef. Yeah, here we go. That's uh, okay. Now, now, cool. Um, let, let, let's look at the questions. Uh, Definitely, some more questions. So, one, one you just elaborated on. What could be the risk? So, maybe if I am able to ask another question, did it sometimes go wrong, and how did you evaluate that, and did you seek for a new partner, or did you make new? Now, of, course, with yeah, them. of course, of course, goes wrong. Goes wrong. Uh, there's a lot of miscommunication. That's that's maybe uh, also um, uh, an added value of having a vertical integrated company. Um, although I think internally there's also a lot of miscommunication, but there's you should really align constantly on on with your partners. And therefore we have quite a, a huge uh, procurement, or actually a, a sort of a partnership department, I would say, within Lightyear. We've uh, more than 15 uh, people managing the partnerships and not only on uh, uh, contract but also on relation so we really want to uh, 15 people you work on partnerships on on light your side yeah for, that's 10 percent of your people are working with these and partnership perspective yeah oh here we go so that's also if if, if if a startup company wants to follow this model which they probably want if you build a car which exists of more than 30 yeah, systems, oh, and yeah. 10 percent of your people are working with the strategic alliances etc yeah i would say that yeah. yeah if you pursue this model you should definitely take that into account okay yeah. that's another lesson yeah that's a good lesson <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely and it's it's very needed because there is a lot of miscommunication one miscommunication is so easily made it's insane and these are people with a technical background, probably, because yeah, most of the times yeah. the first one is a little bit on business, and the second discussion is always yeah, on technology. Yeah. Yeah. And most of the times, also engineers are involved. Not all engineers are uh, renowned of their communication skills, <laughs> so exactly, you should, that's, that's you should, recognizable as well. You should definitely have people in place who are helping there, um, and also, uh, <laughs> and also and also learning, right? It's also a learning opportunity. I yeah, think. That's, and and they're often forgi forgiven because you know. On the other hand, often there's also less easy communicating technical people. Huh? Definitely, and then you have also cultural cultural aspects, which is for me also a great learning to have. Uh, okay. Wow. Because we as Dutch and especially me, I f I'm quite direct. Um, <laughs> so I think if you have someone 
from Belgium, for example, it's, it's much, much less direct. So you should be really aware of these cultural differences. Uh, and of yeah. course, you get courses in a university about that. But I can assure you, it's way better to experience that in, in, the, in, the, in the student team or in a startup, because then you really learn it uh, instead of the theory. Of course, the theory is needed, but um, you really learn how to deal with that uh, when, when, when doing it wrong. <laughs> and it's not, it's not a problem, right? Uh, but you should be aware of that's wrong. <laughs> and, uh, and if you're aware of that's wrong, then you can fix it. Yeah, and yeah that's true. And if the other side also is aware that we that, that these people are a little bit too blunt, but as soon as you have, as, as, yeah. as soon as you have the law, as long as you have the same goal, it might help that in the yeah. end it will come right. Okay. And transparency is if, if they feel that we are not transparent, and uh, so we really value transparency. So it's one of the one of our core values. Um, but what do you mean with transparency? You cannot all tell all your secrets or... Uh... No, but be transparent on your intentions. So really, yeah, uh, yeah. for example, if we work together with a company uh, um, uh, supplying us, let's say, glass for the, so for the solar panels, um, then I'm transparent in this stage that we might also go build products in the future which does not contain glass. Yeah. I w I, I'm saying that to them and, uh, and they really respect that because then they um, uh, um, they better understand what we want to do and also yeah. where our intentions are. Um, yeah, understandable. Of okay. course, it's, uh, it, yeah, you shouldn't be transparent about everything. <laughs> Yeah, but the, the glass for solar panels should be transparent, otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah, that's, really, that's, that's, that's one thing. thing but indeed, sure. it's, 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 this, it's this very difficult uh, yeah. effect between bluntness and uh, and transparency, exactly. which, which is communicating vessels, of course. So, uh, yeah, yeah that, that's the game. Hop in another question, Rudy. Well, definitely. We have another 15 minutes left. So for the viewers who are within the live stream, they are also able to unmute themselves. And oh, you are cool. able to see them on screen if they dare, actually. In the meantime, <laughs> uh, there are some questions. So we have 15 minutes left. So please, if you want to put yourself on the map, this is your chance. Um, Anastasia is asking, what could be a risk of forming such an alliance? And we spoke about this before. Uh, but also, how can such partnerships work financially? And I thought that was a little bit too broad. So she's specifying, um, like, our products are a direct incentive or how are profits shared? Does someone pay someone oh, that's in mm. working together? So and maybe it has something to do, Tom, because you were heading <laughs> the team. And it didn't really matter whenever you lost something or when you won something oh, 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 oh. financially. <laughs> well, maybe on the map on the board of the, the university. But now you stepped into real life about two, three years uh, ago. And you can't that, make too many okay. mistakes. Yeah, no, 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 we have to clarify a lot. So, <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> so, on the first, uh, indeed, I was the team manager of uh, the student team. It doesn't mean I was heading the student team because uh, I, w I was actually more of the slave of the, <laughs> of the engineers than, <laughs> than I was heading them. Um, <laughs> Second, <laughs> <laughs> that's nicely put. <laughs> this is actually this is also how the organization this is the yeah, triangle. It's, it's yeah. upside down, and, and all, all the shit comes down. <laughs> you know, so that's that's why uh, he's, he's so lucky. He's not the CEO. <laughs> we we had a lot of shit. Now on, on this, we have we have the yeah. financial model. We have the the cooperation and all yeah. the dangers. We had some, but yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. there's some more. Yeah. So indeed, on the on the on the financials, it it it's um um, so also in the student team, it of course was was we should um yeah, how do you call that uh. Uh, put your trousers up in the Netherlands. <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> keeping know, your pants up. Keeping your pants up, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, keep your uh, feet wet, uh, dry. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's really about... Uh, um, so if within a partnership, of course, on if we discuss on IP, uh, and we have this, this register which I told about, and you have to find the fields, and um, we have now situations where we use IP of a partnership in our product, yeah. then we... Uh, we have agreed upon a royalty which is being paid to that company who owns that IP every time we sell a product or if we, for example, supply it, then the, then the royalty is paid. So there are a lot of opportun or a lot of uh, um, yeah, options actually you could select uh, which fits the situation best and there are a lot of lawyers <laughs> yeah. uh, willing yeah, yeah. to help and also willing to be paid. But there's a lot on the other side as well, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. So there is a lot indeed. Uh, we make use of uh, great lawyers actually from actually other companies uh, or from our suppliers who help also us because we have, to, we have a mutual goal, um, which we don't need to pay them because that's our, it's our partner. That's, that's really nice. Um, but of course, the biggest difference between the student team and and and, the st and and Lightyear at the moment is that now we have real customers expecting a product 
which is working all the time, even when uh, when uh, at night, even when it snows, even when it rains, even when it's uh, so. The huge difference is that with a student team, we were just racing Australia, trying to win a challenge, um, and now actually we need to build a product which uh, works all the time. That's a big difference. Second is is that now we really need to make uh, we show that we are capable of making money in the future and that we have a business model. And that's also the second one. It's not yeah. really about the financials. It's much more <coughs> about having a business model in place which works and which is validated and which we've spoken a lot about, but we also a lot of advisors helping us to yeah. uh, get, their, their, get the right model in place. Um, because in the future, I believe, uh, we are not going to own our cars anymore and we are going to share it. Uh, so there are, there are going to be bis business models for Lightyear also where maybe the car remains, uh, Lightyear remains the owner of the car all the time. and. Uh, people uh, having a subscription on a vehicle, for example, which is which is good for us because then the in incentive for us is to build a vehicle which lasts for a very long time, um, because we want to have the vehicle operational as longest um, and also to be to be able to be, to upgrade that vehicle, to remove the battery and put a better battery but, in. But to remove wait, wait on this one because no, normally you you say when you drive an average. 50 kilometers or 35 kilometers, what the Dutch person does, then it's enough for the entire year, although we have a little bit berserk winter, summer, which is, is to be, we live very far from the equator, Crazy, but, but yeah. a normal country has, uh, you have enough with 35 kilometers per day, yeah. but then if you start sharing it, that, that suddenly doesn't, doesn't yeah. fly. But then you want to have uh, actually a car with, with a huge range. And then and you uh, just have the, the, uh, the, the yeah. enormous uh, yeah. efficient car. So I think indeed, that's a very good one. There are, I think, two models for Liger, which we are at mm -hmm. the moment actually are thinking about. So one model is that you have a car which never needs to charge again. And that's specifically made for people who want to own the vehicle and only drive 40, 50 kilometers per day. And then actually they never have to charge again. The second is that you have people or even a shared car, which is being a lot used a lot of time. Then the solar doesn't really add a lot of value, but then it's really about range. And then you want to have a big battery, then you want to have a... Exactly. So there's... Oh yeah, that's a different vehicle. Yeah, there's actually... Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a same platform indeed, different vehicle. Yeah. And then have two models in place where you can target different, uh, different uh, audiences. I think, for example, for the second one, we are in talks with, with several ride hill companies um, to, uh, to build the, the best taxi out there. Uh, and also to have a taxi. Um, of course, it should be autonomous, eh, that, but that's not the focus of Lightyear. But if you look at <coughs> what's really important when having an autonomous vehicle, that you don't want to have downtime. Mm -hmm. Because downtime means the car cannot operate, and downtime is when the car is charging. If you build a vehicle with a huge range and actually can be operated the whole day, charges overnight uh, on a low low power plug, which doesn't cost a lot of uh, infrastructure, um, then you have the best right hill vehicle out there, or the best autonomous yeah, taxi out there. Because charging is a problem with uh, right hailing, yeah. Yeah, definitely a problem. Yeah. So therefore, I think we actually are able to build the best autonomous taxi, and not Tesla, because they are heavy, okay. quite heavy, not energy efficient, and this acceleration makes no sense if you build an autonomous vehicle. No, that's true, that's, that's this one. Because it should be acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we can do a trial already, that we share your car, Carlo, in the upcoming gonna months. Share my, yes. I'm not going to share my light you. <laughs> He's I not really into <laughs> it, but you have another one I heard recently. <laughs> okay. There's Samuel uh, sitting Samuel, ready. Hi. Maybe you can unmute yourself so we can hear you actually. Oh, we have somebody with the guts to show themselves. Hi, Excellent. Samuel, welcome. Yeah, hi. Su su super, super interesting. Uh, and thank you so much for, for already all of the great questions. I think um, one of the uh, interesting things that Lightyear has is kind of you, you decided to make a whole car. Um, so you're quite ver also vertically integrated. How do you go about deciding what you want to keep in scope for yourself versus what you... Yeah, good question. Uh, yeah. Look for partnerships, or, or, or so I find that always very tricky. It's always easier to say, okay, yeah, they're not doing this nice, nicely enough. Let me do that as well. Let me do that as well. Let me do that as well. How do you kind of find that balance and mm -hmm. make that decision? Yeah, I think so. We have um, and we, a little bit of background in the company. So we started with the uh, with building a sort of a digital twin, as we call it, uh, but we actually call it the, the vehicle performance model, and it's a model which uh, actually. Uh, maps all the interactions of the systems um, and therefore um, we are able to really understand the dynamics which is which uh, help us to reach the efficiency and we actually select the components which add the most to this efficiency to build ourselves because what we see in the market is that for example on the in-wheel motors which of course uh, add tremendously to the energy consumption 
you see that a lot of current in-wheel motor designs are not as efficient as we are and are not made for uh, personal vehicles. So there is actually no supplier out there who could easily build that and therefore we do it ourselves. Uh, for example, on the, uh, the solar of course also uh, uh, adds to the uh, uh, not to the efficiency, but to the, uh, to the to the to to be able to drive on the sun, yeah. and there are no, actually no suppliers out there who can uh, deliver us the panel which, uh, uh, which is automo automotive tested, which is uh, durable, which is uh, energy efficient, and actually cost uh, cost friendly. Um, then also on the inverters, we have the same, uh, which which add um, massively helps. Then on the tires, which is also super important, uh, we partner up with a company which is going to be announced uh, very soon. We, are, we have developed a really interesting product with them together. Um, because it's a very efficient tire? Yeah, or yeah it, it really helps to uh, uh, reduce the uh, rolling resistance. Of course, that's only really applicable for driving on lower speeds. Um, on the aerodynamics, we did a lot of ourselves because you see that aerodynamics really on high speeds, of course, goes, goes quadrat quadratic with the speed. So you see that aerodynamics is really important. Uh, we did ourselves. So we really made our decisions based on this sort of digital twin yeah. on what we want to develop ourselves. And then for all the parts which do not really add. So for example, the battery, of course, it helps to have a, a, a battery which is um, uh, um, energy dense, but there are sort of we, we dare follow the market. We, yeah. we are not going to invent a new battery. We really follow the market on, on, on the state of the art energy density. So we, we work together with a company, but we actually outsource the battery development for, for a lot. So yeah, only the interaction of the battery, the, the battery management system with our systems, that's something we develop ourselves because it's really uh, a lot of interaction with the, with the, uh, with the system and safe, safety crucial. <laughs> so you really want to have that in-house. Um, but still, for a lot of components, from based on this digital twin, we can just say, okay, we want to uh, source it because there is also a really good alternative already available in the market. So every, and if there's no available uh, alternative available, then we either find a supplier who's willing to jump our train and yeah. and, and and also believes in the goal and really wants to help, um, or we are developing it ourselves. But I think because of Tesla. A lot of suppliers actually now are willing to also work with us. How's that? Yeah, because they see that that Tesla made it actually made it the transition to electric vehicles uh, okay. happen, and because this transition is now really in place, and I also briefly talked to Rudy about that. You really, without Tesla, Lightyear wouldn't be here. Without the opening of the market, uh, Lightyear would not be able to build this vehicle because now, actually, the uh, factories who, who are used to produce BMWs, <laughs> VDL, actually are now, n yeah, they need to shift because the BMW is not going to make their minis anymore in, in Bourne and actually yeah. is going to switch to electric. Um, every existing relationship is now under pressure, <laughs> I would say. Yeah, it, it, so it, it turned around a little bit, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like, uh, it's like yeah, we, we are there at the right place at the right time. Um, and that's, that's, I think, yeah, it's luck, but it's also why we started the company because this, this is yeah this is actually the best time to be around in the electric vehicle space because there are so many new opportunities out there um, new relationships to be built we are talking to uh, I'm I'm really eager to tell this but I cannot because I'm under a, <laughs> a disclosure agreement okay but, but then we'll we'll, but we'll keep we'll keep an eye we'll keep, on it we keep it's it's yeah, there's going to be a, a it's really a nice cliffhanger yeah. keep it less I will, yeah. I will I will I need to stop talking there but <laughs> Elon Musk by the way I, I, he was in Amsterdam and I went there with uh, with Lex and he promised Lex that he would take would a drive, drive yeah, uh, definitely so it's yeah. still open so he, he might listen now but uh, <laughs> he's, he still promised to take a take a take a ride in it so, so it would be uh, awesome huh. That would be awesome. He knows. Obviously. He knows about Lightyear. He knows about the solar team. He, uh, he, he, he tweeted yeah. about it already a few couple of years ago. So uh, we'll 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 stick to that. Uh, we'll keep him to his promise. Maybe for the people listening in right now in the live call, we only have a few minutes left. Uh, maybe if there's one final one question, please. Uh, Put it in, drop the chat. it in, yeah. And otherwise, I can, you start waving if there's a last question. Yeah, and, um, definitely. And otherwise, we can't then try to sum it up as well because it's. I, I, I learned some things as well. You're, you're growing. It's even more important in order to, to, to have this model of, uh, of having externalities uh, and winning instead of doing all yourself, which is not possible. That's something that startups should have. So, 
the focus on working with your uh, suppliers and uh, and to pick that's also the question came in what are the essential ones among them and put extra emphasis on that one because it's if, if it's going wrong in that direction it makes you very dependent is that also yeah. something yeah, yeah. so um, and, and if we now if, if this model it gives you the opportunity to grow for another couple of years and you have this model and you're going to outsource the production probably or at least cooperate in the cooperation um, just just think about 20 years ahead so there's nothing in this car that is by definition if you make millions out of it, it would be very expensive am i right true is, isn't it and in due course there's no other way of having a solar alike cell a solar cell alike car and especially we think with our infrastructure here, but a lot of countries in the world where who don't have charging infrastructure whatsoever yet isn't this going to be the benchmark car for less than 10,000 euro in due course? I think the dream started with uh, Lex being raised in Africa uh, and uh, one of our co-founders, <laughs> Gurain, being also raised in South Africa. They uh -huh. really know um, the need for having a transition there and having a clean transition. And I think that's, uh, that's the, the, the end game. Uh, so build a vehicle which is intrinsically uh, sustainable uh, which actually helps a lot of people mobility. Uh, what we learned from you, Carlo, is that uh, mobility is freedom and everyone should have a right to be mobile. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what we 100% believe in at Lightyear and that's our, that's our end game. So uh, I'm happy if we go on holiday in, in 20 years, Carlo, and do a safari and we see all those people driving in light years. Okay, I'll, <laughs> then, uh, I'll, I'll, <laughs> then I'll remind then you to that in 20 years. <laughs> 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 Let's have a holiday then. Then, then, yeah, the, okay. uh, then, the, uh, then the goal is there, yeah, that's the end game. Yeah. That's a nice one. So it started in Africa, the dream, and uh, now we're going to <laughs> back, back, yeah. go back to Africa again. Yeah. It's uh, that's Sometime. the thing. Yeah. Because they might th these are countries that can leapfrog, and they Definitely. don't they don't have the entire installation, etc. They leapfrogged on the landlines and have skipped mobile and phones, have mobile yeah. phones immediately. So why not leapfrog and forget about the gasoline engines and immediately jump to these? So yeah, definitely. Okay, let's stick that. That's something that we're going to discuss in 10 years from now, probably. Um, th thanks all for being here and, and, and the input. And um, also like to thank the, the main sponsor. It's also uh, the, the, the Kick Air Mobility. And so to check, they do a lot. This is something that they do just to try to inspire people and who, who are considering starting, of, uh, starting a startup. Uh, they do a lot more on how to improve our cities and improve uh, mobility. So check their site. It's, uh, it's, it's another love baby of mine, the Kick Air Mobility. So. Uh, lots of the of the EIT mobility, lots of things happening there. Uh, we're going to be back. You're probably going to tell uh, what, what's what's next, but uh, hopefully to see you again. And uh, and thanks for the attention. Definitely, many many thanks to the two of you. Obviously, Tom Selt, our very first guest, and now um, yeah, we will be back next month, April 13th, for the people who are participating in the Boost program. Ah, uh, there you are, I guess. Um, excellent. I did see some extra questions in the live stream as well. Why is no other company working on a solar roofed car? Well, maybe mm. there are some. There, there are some, yeah. Yep. Some are there. He's, uh, Tom is nodding heavily. You can Google them, but there are also some nice documentaries on the traditional car manufacturing world. And it goes a little bit slower than it goes in Helmond with Lightyear because they travel with the speed of light, obviously. It was a pleasure hosting this. Um, Carlo and me will be back in the upcoming uh, three months actually every month we will host a new episode within the topic of mobility such a pleasure for you to be, t be attending and very nice for you standing in the questions whenever you did hopefully this was worthwhile and we would love to see you back next month april 13th same time see you then <laughs>